feeding. Ah. Welcome back to another fine episode of Owls the Bill Tons. Holy moly, what a day! I tell you, this uh, is it El Nino they're calling it. Ah, that chick, she can just hang around because I can get used to this. Uh, for those who I'm not with on Facebook, my memory from last year is uh, doing some chores after supper in the dark. So, you know, like five o'clock. <laughs> no, that'd be like seven o'clock, I think. We had been away in town or doing something. So it was like seven or eight and I had to have a few bales to put out. And uh, the old orange tractor was not having, was not having so much fun getting started. Hey girls, um, minus 37. This time last year it was. So yeah, it's right currently plus four. I think it's supposed to get to plus five. Um, so yeah, we'll take that. So plus five today, plus five tomorrow. Suki, what do you think? Suki's like, ah, I'm good with that. She's like, it's hot, it's hot. It's the Sukumaya Jones. That's right, yeah. Two Sukis. Hey, sweeties. Yeah. Um, there's Leia. Leia is very petted. You just don't touch on the head. She's not a fan. Everything else goes. See? Let's see the little stumps going. She's, she knows I'm close. There's Lamar. I'll get you. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, so yeah. We'll take this. So that's why I'm still feeding them down here. I'm actually uh, trying to keep them down here. They kept wanting to come back up to the yard last, last night and they hadn't finished the uh, the hay. Here's the legend, here's the squirts, the family favorite. Squirtsers, yeah, yeah, squirtsers. She is, she was hand raised. Yeah. Anyway, back to the case in point. Um, squirrel. So yeah, I uh, actually gave them their silage down here last night. I'm actually gonna check up on this. Oh, sorry, darling. Check up on this. I've never done this before. So what I did was, see, this is, this is the earliest of the first cut from that field over there. So it's the worst quality. It got rained on two, three times. I can't remember which ones were which. So it's not good quality. So that's why it's getting fed with silage. Like they get silage in the tire feeders. Last night I tried something different. I laid the silage down the top of the hay. That stuff, just like that. So they had started into it kind of like this and then they'd walked away because they followed me back up to the yard, buggers. So I came down here and I dropped the silage on top of the hay and that's, there's not a lot left. Definitely not much silage. You can see a bit of the hay, but yeah, that's pretty good. Man, if I could do that. Man, that's where if I had like a tub grinder, grind up all of these lower quality hays and then throw them into the mixer with the silage, that would be a one turn ration right there. So yeah, they're just meandering their way down because they're not. I seem to have found a good uh, level of feeding that's keeping up with them. So, because we've added a couple of the youngsters to this lot. So now I'm still trying to kind of balance out what they need to get per day. Um, but they're not, they're not hurting. No, they're, no, they're not hurting. Because it's what, what is today? The 6th of December? So, rest of December, okay, January, February. So yeah, three months and we'll be into calving. So yeah, they're looking all right. Anyway, just thought I'd look at that because I can get the tractor and 
processor and the mixer wagon for that just gonna miss these rocks down here and then there is a way to get round there round oh round the corner and there's more bits over there because you can see there's a stream here that meanders meanders down there so yeah i can go around the corner and go over there so if i can go down there well it's still clear and nice because it's supposed to be nice till next week again too so like i said old el nino there you can just uh you can just hang around it's leia oh she's, see she's making a runner for it anyway that's where we're at bring you back oh yeah tomorrow got an appointment where the heck is she going hey 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 stupid is stupid does sir um got an appointment in brandon tomorrow i'm gonna see about getting my uh the next round of my dentures done as because people might know that i've had to have uh, reconstructive surgery on my upper jaw so i'm in the middle of getting implants done so i can have a set of tupperware teefies that way you'll start seeing me back on camera more anyway going to go and get the tin tomorrow for the shelters yeah so bring you back what the gosh is she doing <sighs> okay so when you have a uh, rack of tin this long how do you get it up the trailer when you only have a uh, bail for it you improvise now the orange tractor because it has the euro attachment and my straw bale thing it has spikes out there and out there and it's great for lifting these off but yeah we don't have an orange tractor right now and this tractor doesn't have euro attachment so this is where we're at come with me as we defy physics <laughs> oh piper duck um probably should have uh, looked at the uh shipping slip as I uh, embarked on this little endeavor. As you'll notice, this skid is not on the end of this part of the uh, lift of tin. This tractor couldn't lift that. Not quite, 95% of it was off the trailer, except either end. So I drove forward, except that end there, coming the last off the trailer, caught here pulled it off the end of the tent. It's no damage, but just a bit of a bugger. But the plan worked, it didn't buckle. Now, as you can see, red tent. You're all like, the Piper Doug. What about your black roof? <laughs> uh, black roof. So yeah. 28 foot, because it's, well, it's 26 foot deep by the happy overhangs. So, yeah, 28 foot, and then the uh, eight foot back walls, and then the graduating four sides, so that's what this is. So there we go, next part to the puzzle. So I'm gonna put the tractor away and then take Jody's trailer back. We're back in here, yeah, I know. So yeah, getting clothes back on. So I have, uh, I put the wires back up inside there because I'm not gonna, I found the other, other light by the way. There it was, here's the two of them. Like I said, this, there was nothing wrong with it. It just, uh, that one came loose. And as you can see, it broke the end of the wire off it, so. I'm not going to put them back on. I think what we're going to end up doing is we'll probably end up getting a good set of proper lights with LEDs 
and then putting some sort of a bull bar up front here just to protect this because it's still in fairly good condition and I'd kind of like to try and keep it that way. And then, like I said, next season, we'll uh, do the strip down. There's a couple of wrinkles up here. They were uh, there before I got it. And I have found out that one of my, uh, that was me, this. That was when we were recovering this tractor when it broke down and took off while we had the uh, front end being picked up with the other tractor and it kind of got squirrely and uh, the chains did that. So I've got to, I'll knock that back out. Um, anyway, so yeah, shout out to uh, Luke Muir, who, uh, as far as I know, is from this area. Because this was their tractor. Funny, how, uh, how funny is that? Uh, and the other funny part, going by what Luke uh, commented, uh, the tractor that they traded this on up at the Massey dealership is the sort of newer version, it's like 10 years newer, than the orange tractor that normally sits here and leaks everywhere. Irony. Literally the identical tractor. Um, apparently it's got like almost the same amount of hours as what the orange one has. The, what did you say? It was 14,000 hours on that one? That Massey of yours is 60 something. 6,000, I can't remember the numbers. Um, so yeah, six degrees of uh, Piper Doug, there you go. So yeah, maybe uh, Luke can fill us in on what happened there. It's like I said, that was there before we got the tractor. But I'll, uh, I'll hammer that back out once I take all the panels off. He did say, and that's the reason why you can see it's a red block, because this was the same when we had the 10 series, we had a 6610 and there was a run of 6610s that had bad engines. So Luke said that this uh, was changed out at 2200 hours. So the engine hasn't quite done as many hours as the tractor, but not too far off. Um, leaking diesel from the filter yes it needs new filters that's one of the jobs it's gonna have this winter is going soup to nuts as they say anyway job at hand here's something this tractor has not had in decades a swing out battery box i know how sexy is that <laughs> That thing has been stuck. I, I couldn't even tell you. We've had the tractor 20 years, give or take. Um, and the battery box was stiff and it got to there. And that's where it's been for the last at least 10 years, if not more. Because that's as far as we could get it. So I've been soaking it with the uh, this stuff because it's a pin. Let's see if I can do this while you're watching. There, look at that. Ooh. Oh, that, that kind of got a bit dirty. Um, so yeah, it's a pin that sits down into that tube there. So basically, I took the big old uh, jack here and I stacked different sizes of sockets on there, pushing up against the underside, and then just did this. And a little help from uh, old MC Hammer there. And it just slowly worked its way up and then finally got it off. And then I used the flat wheel, ground all the rust and surface crud off of it. And then I absolutely lubed the ever loving bejesus out of it and the inside of the tube. And oh, oh look at that. Oh. Oh, I know, I I'm sad. I need to get out more. Anyway, so I'm gonna fire the battery back in there and then uh, go back to dealing with the oil leak and then this bugger is out of here. Cab heat works, it's not leaking. Touch wood. Let's get on. It's back. 
Yep. Pouring rain through the night. Turned to snow. That's mud. And about four inches of snow. And now there's an absolute blow storm coming in. So, they say, because they say, because there's them, there's no more snow coming. So, oh, the gate is swung shut. It's not supposed to be closed. Uh, so I am going to be bedding and bailing. I'm gonna go and open that gate because these poor girls are not supposed to be shut in. Sorry, girls. Oh, always on the worst, worst days. You saw the last clip. Oh, look at the lovely snow. Oh, the gate had blown closed and the cows were shut in the corral. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, there's a lake at the back of the yard. Oh, they smashed the top of the water trough and it's been blagging water out all effing night. These are the days you can pack her in. Look at that. Thousands of gallons of water. Yep. And the downpipe underneath inside the box is full of water. The only saving grace is it's not minus 20. Windchill is minus 8. Believe you me, it is blowing. It's like 40, 50k right now. It's supposed to get worse. Uh, it's the one thing. They charge you a lot of money for these water troughs. I don't see where the money is. There's not a lot of building goes into these troughs. Like these float tanks. They're flimsy. They just fall apart. You can see I added 2x6s because the cows were pushing the sidewalls in. So I'm going to have to rebuild that. So basically what happened was they get hammering. They broke the sidewall. You can see at the side there, the corner has come apart. They pushed that sidewall all the way in. Uh, and here's the valve. They snapped it off. So, lucky enough, I managed to find most of the parts. But honest to gosh. That's what I mean. The price of things today. And you can visibly see what goes into making them. Like, how can you charge over a thousand dollars for that? A box with insulation, a couple of heater elements, and some wiring. And some plumbing. A thousand dollars. Spooker. So yeah, there's my fun job. Between that and trying to get everybody fed and bedded today. It's going to be a long day. And then what do I do with this? I suppose I could come in here with a skid steer and try and push that water down around the corner. It's just going to be an absolute mess. Oh, To be a grain farmer some days. He's be laggy. So yeah, that's uh, the replacement box on. It's a little bit more robust than the last one. The other one is on the truck. Using the truck as a warm house because it's not warm today. It's my garage. Um, so yeah, if I stand here, then the pets. There's April. Nice April. She's actually not a pet. That's weird why she would come up and lick my hand. I joke her, she's a pet. Um, there's Akers. Hey, Zakes. So yeah, I've got to stand here and just hold them back. The other water trough's not keeping up. And that We knew that. That's why they have two water troughs on the go right now. Um, so I have the valve open, wide open on this, so it's filling as quick as it can. But I've got to let them get a drink so I can come back and set the float valve. I've got it set as close as I could think it was, but 
I've got to set it so that the water stays like about two inches underneath the surface. We found that's a really good level, keeps the box warm. Plus, if the water gets too high, the actual wind coming in here licks the water right out of the trough. So yeah, that's why I'm here. Anyway, let's get on. Lovely and toasty. Oh, goodness gracious, it's lovely and toasty. Oh, oh, oh. Good enough. Back in the workshop. Yeah, that's not the normal Ford grill. Hmm. Well, what is going here, Peppa Dog? What is happening? Uh, well, uh, this is what's happening. Uh, when I ordered, I don't even know what that means. Uh, when I ordered off of the old Ebates, a uh, commercial dark grey plastic grill and I painted it white for this truck. I also ordered a piece of glass uh, for there. Now for those of you who don't know the backstory, uh, why there is a piece of uh, puck board in here as this truck was parked in the driveway a few years ago um, it was what were we doing I think we were moving animals around in the yard so we had the truck parked in the driveway to block the driveway so it was there for it was there for a few hours so I'll put it that way uh, yeah middle of a sunny day I try to remember if it was sort of in the fall. I can't really remember. They went to move the truck and the back window was missing. And it was inside the truck. So all we can think of is that uh, somebody shot the back window out. Because there's no other reason for it. It was far enough off the road off the main gravel road that uh, it wouldn't have been stone chips. Okay, cover your eyes. That's better. Uh, so it wasn't stone chips from the gravel road. And ironically, the truck was almost sitting in the same position as where one of our uh, bred heifers that was in that paddock got shot in the eye. So it's like somebody's taking the same cracks at me. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. You can kind of see the, uh, my, uh, Opaxo Bellum. That's my clan shield. Dancing, Highland dancing is life. That's from my daughter, Kostoina. This truck did many, many kilometers going back and forward to Highland dancing. And then, goalie dad, goal in the net. This truck did many, many miles going back and forward to Liam's hockey. Going to hockey camps. Okay, so where were we at? Okay, so what we have to do is remove the side panels and wear gloves because it's not fun. Lots of sharp parts. So yeah, you just pop these off. Just lay them down. Oh, you have to unbolt the top of the uh, seat belt. And then you undo the side panels, lay them down in here. Use a pry bar once you've cut your hand. That's a good idea. And then after that is basically all you do is you go along here and you peel the rubber while pushing on the glass. You peel it and push it. And eventually the glass will start to migrate out. And then you'll sort of get to a point where it'll be hanging out. And then you sort of lift it up out of here. See, this isn't... These aren't, this is just like a tight fit. So then you'll just sort of lift it up out of here and up and away. The reason we're doing this is because you have to remove the window to uh, 
unscrew, there's little screws here and here, to unscrew the frame in the middle because that is a sliding glass. So yeah, you have to take the window out to do that. That's the fun part. So I've never done one of these trucks before. The 97 that's sitting out there in the driveway, I have done it. It, we know how that happened. My brother borrowed my truck to pull a water trailer to go and fill his father-in-law's uh, hot tub. Brought it back with the back window. Well, one side of the back window missing. Uh, to which I had to find a replacement. I don't know how that works. You break my window, I have to find the replacement and fix it. Luckily enough, <laughs> while it was taped over, I went to the co-op. Some guy walked up to me in the parking lot and said, Hey, you looking for a window? I've got a window and no truck. Got rid of the truck so you can have the window. Drove straight down there, picked up the window. Uh, and it was a case of uh, the old body style Fords had the twin sliding windows in the middle. Uh, but it was one of these ones, one of the side windows that was smashed out. So if you ever notice in the other truck, one of the glass is not tinted. That's why. Anyway, back to this at hand. I'm going to do the doodle 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 and push this out and we'll bring you back. Okay. Vinda is removed. As you can see, the seat is sitting back in. So, yes, I found it uh, way easier to flick these panels outside so I could climb in here and sit because, well, I have a bad back. So it's a bit of an issue trying to waddle around in here and then push and flick the rubbers out. I used these uh, swather blades. So all you did was you pulled the rubber out and then you tuck these to hold the rubber from coming back up inside that lip. So yeah, I just had a bit. I only end up using three of them, so it doesn't take much to add pressure. Putting back ends a little bit more fun, so yeah. So yeah, for the last, I don't know how many years this truck's been sitting. Like I said, I just put a piece of that in there and some Gorilla Tape just a couple of different times. So I'm going to take that all off and then I'm going to try and clean this up as best I can. Um, where is it? There's screws. I think it's down in the bottom. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, I'll bring you back and take it apart. So here we go. Yep, so got some of this, uh, I have no idea where it came from. Bale of twine is just as good. Um, so yeah, what you do is you wrap that string around in the, uh, in the crevasse there that this will go into. So yeah, so you'll put the string in that all the way around to there and I'll come all the way around and past back to there. It always has to overlap. And then you have the strings to the inside because you're pulling the window into the cab. So yeah, you put the strings on and then you put the window into the opening and you kind of get it started on the lower part because you're working with gravities better. So you'll get the lower corners into there and there. So to push it down and in. It's always handy if you have two people, best. I don't have the option, so we're working with what we Last time I did this, I didn't have another person either. So what you do is you stick it in, push the window up against the cab if you can, and then just using some duct tape or whatever, just tape it back to it. So then you start pulling the string and the good thing about these cabs is you can reach around the corner and be pushing at the glass and pulling the string at the same time. So, going to get this fired in there and then bring it back. And there we have it. Window went in the first time. It was so easy. Get it, Ben! Get it! Stand up! So yeah, 
it's a, uh, it's a little bit of a chore, a little bit, you know, it's, you have to, you have to be fairly physical. Why is it not going in? What's it? It's not fitting! Yes! And, uh, yeah, just gotta be patient. That's the big main game of this is, uh, well, you're working with glass, so you really do have to be patient. Yeah, so that's her in. Um, I don't pay attention to that. So yeah, uh, next thing to do is just to put in the uh, side panels. That's how to put the centerpiece back window into a 2003 F350. Um, so, yeah, you take this rubber out, you have to take that bottom piece off, that just pops out. Having a pry bar is good. The rubber just pops out. These side panels just pop out. But there's a Torx. It's that one. I can't read it because I have terrible eyesight. There's a Torx uh, inside these caps. These caps pop up this way. Uh, undo them, just drop them down. Uh, I know they do say you're supposed to use uh, soapy water to put the rubbers in, but it's the middle of winter. Uh, so I have this. Uh, yeah, it's for cows. Uh, but it was on hand. You definitely don't want to use a petroleum product on rubber because it makes the rubber, it compromises the rubber. So don't use that. Don't use oil or any of that stuff. So that's why I use mineral oil. I've had good luck with it. And yes, make sure you clean the area well with glass cleaner or net your devour, whatever that is. So yeah, we're done. Uh, oh no, there's one more job. Um, because when I installed these uh, upgrade headlights, uh, I couldn't even tell you what the model is. If I remember, I'll stick in the description. Uh, these have it, these LEDs along here. They don't really serve a purpose. They're just kind of cool. But the lights are really, really good. Really, really. This, these ones stopped working. So I think the wire came uh, uncrimped inside. Um, I'm looking at switching out, I think it's the lower one to LED. But yeah, there's LEDs in there and they're not running at the moment. So I'm gonna pop that out and redo it. But the time has come been dragging this out long enough i've subjected you to way too much thanks for watching everybody i hope you uh, enjoyed it uh as always remember to leave a comment down below i will get back to you i promise i will uh and if you think about it leave a like on the way out and uh subscribe and all that good stuff i have no idea what's going to be happening next week I don't know what's happening tomorrow, to tell you the truth. But what I do know is, I'll bring you along for the ride. Hope you have a great week, everybody. And uh, enjoy the festive season. And remember to tell everybody a Merry Christmas. Because this happy holidays crap needs to end. Tati bye, everybody.